Hey everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be returning to the world of large format resin 3D printing with the Piopoli Forge. So this is gonna be quite a long video, so strap in. So full disclosure that this printer was sent to us by Piopoli for free and we have no obligation to send it back, which is amazing. Thank you very much, Piopoli. We were also not obligated to create this review at all, but we definitely felt like it was worth doing because this is a phenomenally good machine and we wanted to share it all with you, especially after the mishaps that we had with the Elgo Jupiter. So if you followed along with our channel, then maybe you've watched that review of the Elgo Jupiter that we did, which was not very positive. It had a lot of problems uh, that we identified and I think are valid, frankly, when you compare it to something like this. Now, I am not going to be comparing the Forge to the Jupiter because I feel like that's just unfair. So we're just going to be looking at the Forge for the most part, but there will be some moments where I have to draw a little bit of a comparison. So the name Piopoli definitely comes with a pedigree. Um, all the Piopoli makes, actually, is large format resin 3D printers. The Forge is actually the smallest of them. There's the Piopoli L, the Noir, and the XXL V2, I believe. And there are, of course, other models previous that they've also made. But it, sh it really does show that the build quality of Piopoli is dedicated to large format, and that really does matter. So when it comes to the build quality, there are aspects that I definitely I'll highlight right now. They know exactly what they're doing when it comes to where those critical aspects are. For starters, when we open up the casing, um, much like every other printer, frankly, it's a box. There's not a whole big difference there. However, what they are doing differently is in their materials. The paneling on the side, uh, it actually it looks kind of aluminum-esque. If you want to come around here, uh, it looks kind of aluminum. It's a little bit dirty from resin, um, but it's actually plastic. It's a composite material. And when I compare it to, again, I said I wasn't going to compare it to the Jupiter, but in this case, it does make some sense. Um, the composite plastic doesn't resonate. The Jupiter is all built uh, out of steel or it's a metal of some kind, all bent panels. And this, and it was, it was quite noisy. You, you hear that the build plate drop. And this guy, it, it just dampens all those vibrations quite a lot, which is great. So it's basically a silent machine. So another really good aspect is, of course, the Z axis. It's like the quintessential part of a resin 3D printer that has to work perfectly every time. Piopoli spends an extra bit of effort on this Z axis. It is a like incredibly heavy duty piece of aluminum with the dual Z axis rails. Uh, it's got the double ball screw, uh, same type of screw that we see on the SL1S, actually. It looks pretty much identical. Um, amazing to see. I believe they also have a safety mechanism up here in the top so that when those, if those suction forces, when it's lifting, are too high, it doesn't strain the machine. It's not like, it's not just brute forcing it. It will let you know. There will be like a click, a skip if it's pulling too much. And that is a good indication that your settings aren't quite right. And aside from the, the you know, Z-axis itself, they've actually tied it in, and I can verify this, because when we get this machine, it comes in two boxes, so you have to build the, the top layer. The bottom is all ready assembled. They've tied the Z-axis into this crossbar, as well as the top crossbar using like six big heavy-duty screws. So it's not going to torque at all. I believe that was a problem on that last machine where the, the Z-axis, when it, when it lowers down, there's so much pressure being squeezed between the build plate and the bottom of the resin vat that it just twists the machine somehow. And if you don't have that light off delay, just some kind of a rest period for the resin to settle down, you're gonna start to have print issues. But of course, if you have a rigid machine, you don't need more of a delay. So Piopoli definitely knows what they're doing. They have a great rigid system in the Z-axis. Another aspect of the build quality that I find is the build plate itself. It's incredibly simple. 
Um, again, I, I don't want to keep referring back to the Jupiter, but like, ugh, I have to. <laughs> because when you look at the Jupiter build plate with that, with those wonky like tower feet things, which I think were designed to just keep the build plate clean, but you know, extend it further into the resin so you could have more resin going at once. Um, they just didn't do that with this. They went with the ultra simple uh, four point screws, which I believe is a, a, a similar trait shared with, uh, with Frozen. Very simple. It, it gives you, you know, all the access to, to play with your, your leveling. It's very, very solid. It's simple, it's cheap and effective. Uh, nothing else that you can really ask for. Build volume on the forge is 288 millimeters in width, 163 millimeters deep, and then it goes from the bottom up uh, 350 millimeters tall. Uh, as compared to the Jupiter, which had 277 millimeters by 156 by 300 tall. So the forge is in fact a little bit larger. If you need just that little extra, this might be something to consider. Uh, I believe, once again, that Piopoli pedigree really shines through and that they know exactly how much they can get away with. Um, if we take a look in here, the build plate itself, if I just drop that into the vat, there's only about, I wanna say three millimeters on either side of the build plate compared to the inside of the tank uh, and not a whole lot more on the front and the back. So it's an incredibly tight fit. Piopoli knew exactly how much they could get away with. And um, yeah, it just shows, because I don't think I would be willing to do that kind of tolerance if, uh, if I didn't know I was gonna get away with it. Now, what's actually producing these high quality prints is the panel. The Forge is running a 6K panel with a 13.3-inch uh, monochrome LCD, which has a 50 micron pixel density size. Now, 50 microns, in my opinion, is a very sweet spot. It's, it allows enough UV radiation to come through it that your exposure times are really, really fast. If you have a higher resolution, there's more compacted into a smaller space, therefore less light is getting through. At least that's the logic I've read about. And as an added benefit, the 6K panel uh, being less than 8K means that replacement costs are a lot lower. The replacement for the panel in the forge, I believe is 300 USD, quite a lot considering you could go buy like a whole cheap other printer for that. Um, but if it were 8K, for example, that would come to more like 450 to 500 USD per just for the panel itself. So above that panel is, I believe, to be that icing on the cake. It is the resin vat. The resin vat doesn't really appear to be all that ridiculous, frankly. It's, it's just a milled block of aluminum. It has a very tasteful uh, bead blasted finish, very similar to the, uh, to, to the build plate. The thing that makes this work is inside, underneath, somewhere in here. I'm sure I'll find it when next I have to change the FEP is a heating coil, or I don't know what they're using exactly to heat this resin vat, but on the front here, you can see this little 3D printed thing here that has a USB port on the side. The USB cord simply goes in a hole in here, plugs in, and the USB is connected to this controller. The controller is completely separate from the machine, so if you ever did have a failure, um, you won't have one or the other just completely fail altogether, which is nice, but would also be great if it was all tied together. Um, anyway, so this controller, you simply you set the temperature you want, and it gets up there. There must be some kind of a little probe in there to keep the, the temp where you want it. Now this function, this heating mechanism is Absolutely fundamental, I think, when it comes to us printing with the casting resins. Because um, if you've never worked with a casting resin before, a lot of them are very temperamental. They like to be heated and kept at a good temperature for the best optimal printing quality. Bluecast X1, for example, needs to be heated to 30 degrees Celsius. And as it cools, it definitely does degrade that print quality. Now, would I recommend you buy X1? For the forge, eh, maybe not, simply because of the cost. 
Now, it's nothing against Bluecast. Things cost what they cost. But when they only sell 500 milliliter bottles at, I think it's 170 something dollars Canadian a bottle, it would cost me 850, 850-ish dollars to fill this vat, which has a, a maximum capacity of two and a half kilograms. That is a lot. And I definitely wouldn't want to attempt that if I didn't have this heated vat because, you know, these prints can take dozens of hours sometimes, depending on the exposure. And, um, you know, if it fails halfway through, that's a lot of money down the toilet. This was actually the first test print that I did on the forge. And obviously it's a pile of rings. Now I put it on this, this hexagonal raft specifically for this purpose. So I could show you uh, what's going on. And it would all, of course, all hold together. In the real world, you would not want to have a raft more than likely. You would just kind of put these little sprues directly on the build plate. And uh, after that, you'd scrape them all off, wash, sprue, and cast. Um, that works out great. <laughs> and you know, the best part is I, I ran this print again in Soriatech True Blue because I had a little bit of extra resin left over from the testing in the last print. Now, it worked. <laughs> it worked phenomenally well. I did have to tweak some of the settings as compared to this guy. Uh, the casting resins compared to polymer resins are definitely a little bit more finicky. They do require some extra uh, care. Um, when I say care, I mean the build plate needs to lift incredibly slowly. I think I dropped the initial retraction down from a normal 80 millisecond down to like 25 or something really, really low. Uh, it really needed to be babied, but you know what? It's better to go slow than have a complete failure. Now it's great printing these designs as a plate, but we've taken it the next step further with printing full assembled trees. Uh, I'm not sure about you guys out there. You, everyone's a little bit different. When I build a tree, it usually takes me an hour and a half to two hours or so to assemble everything. And it's, of course, never perfect. In one tree, I might be able to fit 30 pieces. In another, I might be able to fit 32. Who knows? It, it really depends on that human aspect. Everyone's a little different. Printing trees, I think, mitigates that. So you can get things a lot closer together. You can do custom arrangements so that you can either go supportless or in this case, these are supported because they're, well, they're an unusual design. I was actually able to fit five of these prints on the forge and have them run. And I believe it ran for about 10 hours. So while I was asleep, these were printing, uh, I think it was 90 total pieces pre-assembled that only needed to be washed and then post cured after. Now this resin is ultra premium resin. This is a Sega Supercast S and it was just a smidge over the expiration date, which is why I decided to use it uh, pretty much in this machine. I wasn't gonna use it in any other way uh, and I wanted to give it a shot. We have reviewed this resin. Go give that video a watch at the link in the description below. Not everyone's gonna be buying a Piopoli Forge just to print jewelry items. Uh, you can of course print miniatures. Uh, these are terrains for I believe it's Warhammer 40K. They wanted to do some terrains and then they're gonna have their official army and everything. They printed absolutely flawlessly in, and you can actually see it's kind of a two-tone effect. I used the rest of the Monocure Big Vat to print this. And then I also just kind of topped it up with Soraya Build. Overall printing experience with this machine in pretty much any resin has been phenomenally good. I wouldn't change a thing there. It's just fast, it's reliable, it's quiet and um, it's actually monitorable. So let's actually go back to the machine itself and we'll talk about some of the other features that it has. Probably the most interesting thing that you guys will notice so far is this camera in the back. Now, Piopoli has added this and I don't know how I feel about it, honestly. It's, it feels a little bit, I wouldn't say janky, but it's definitely not as clean. Let's put it that way. Um, the, the unit itself is, is actually quite nice. It's got a adjustable focus lens on it. It's infrared capable and just normal light capable as well. It's wireless, so it can stream to my laptop if it's on the same, actually it doesn't even need to be connected to Wi-Fi. It makes its own little connection. It's a really interesting feature to have, 
but uh, if it was implemented possibly just a little bit better, I'd be much more interested. And especially if it was integrated, if the camera and the wireless upload and maybe even the temperature was all linked together, it would be so much cleaner. But at the moment it's not. And um, for that reason alone, I find the camera is just a little bit, a little bit meh. One of my biggest critiques so far of the Forge is that when it comes to the resin, they don't have any option, external or integrated, for a resin refill system. That's the one thing that I really want to see Piopoli do. Um, maybe if it's just like, you know, wired in through a hole here and it's just like, uh, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to compare them to Anycubic in this way, but I really like the way that Anycubic decided to go about their resin refill system on their M3 series. Um, I don't think it was pulled off 100%, but something like that. Unlike the Elgu one, where it was just an upside down bottle with a cap, um, I've tried that and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it feels really, really anxiety inducing to have an upside down bottle of potentially, you know, $300 material. Just if it leaks into the, the machine, like how are you not gonna know? It could be very slow, it could be a huge mess that you have to clean up. The other thing I'd like to see Piopoli come up with is uh, a washing solution. Uh, they do have a cure solution, it's a large, probably similar to this almost, in terms of uh, like UV LEDs coming in from all sides to cure large prints. But they don't have a wash solution and I'm having a lot of trouble with that. So my overall opinion of the Piopoli Forge, aside from the things that I'd like to see change, um, is that I simply love it. I love this machine. It's, it's proven itself as incredibly reliable. It has shown that that Piopoli pedigree, the, the, the little things here and there that make all the difference actually do make a difference. They, it's coming from people that know exactly what they're doing. Um, I do enjoy Valera Slicer. Um, now, compared to Chidu Box, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it's not my favorite slicer, but they are trying to expand that connectivity to other options, so there's that. I think the part that you guys, the consumers who are probably watching this video looking to get a large format resin 3D printer will like is that this is one of the most affordable large format resin printers that you can buy. As of the recording of this video, it is on sale for $999. So for a thousand bucks, you too could have a Piopoli Forge, which actually makes it the lowest cost large format resin printer on the market of today. The Anycubic, I believe, comes in at 1100 for their M3, the big guy. Now it is a slightly larger build plate, but doesn't have all those, some of these features. And the Elgu, I believe, comes in at 1400, I can't recall. Either way, I believe that all the features that are in it justify even the full price more than enough. So if you are in the market for a large format resin 3D printer, either to print miniatures, uh, jewelry, increase your production, I strongly recommend the Piopoli Forge. Unlike that Jupiter, which I sold on, I will definitely be keeping this machine because it's gonna help introduce a new level of productivity and quality to our studio. I'm gonna be able to do the work of like two people with this machine overnight while I'm asleep. And I just can't give that up. So, so that's my review of the Piopoli Forge. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. That's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.